Hey, hey everybody. Today we're going to take a look at model building and rational economic thinking, two ideas that economists do, two concepts that pervade all of your course of study in IB economics, and it's part of this Foundations of IB Economics series that I've been putting together. So let's take a look. Model building. <laughs> economists are famous for this. They're social scientists. Study human beings. There's flaws. You, you can't know everything about everyone all of the time. And it's part of the beauty of economics is that these assumptions are made about how people will behave. And when taking in mass, groups of people will tend to behave in a similar way. And the, the assumption of demand, that demand makes, that if the price is lower, more people will demand the product. Is that true? Yeah, the, 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 on the whole, yeah. But there are certain goods that individually, like, I don't want, and you don't want. You lower the price all you want, and you're not going to buy it, right? But on average, in mass, groups of people tend to behave similarly. And so in that light, you've got to keep that in mind. Um, there's a couple models, or one main model that, that economists build, and we're going to go through it really quickly, which is called the circular flow model. And I'll show you two examples. But, but based on this idea of rational, <laughs> rational economic thinking, uh, economists tend to build theoretical models in order to test and illustrate their theories. Right? And they always got to hold something constant. Ceteris paribus is Latin for all things being equal. And the concept here is that when economists want to test the effect of one variable on another, they need to be able to isolate the effect of one of the variables by assuming that there is no change in any of the other variables. Okay, so an example of a model is something called the circular flow model. And check out the video that's part of the series called the circular flow model, which walks you through how it exactly works. I'm not going to do that in this video, but I'm just going to use it as an example of what economists build um, in order to talk about how, say, money or income and resources and products flow throughout an economy. So here's one. This comes to us from Jocelyn Blink. And... You can see that there are some households here, there are some firms, and you can follow the arrows in that, you know, someone in a household um, will get up in the morning and sell their labor to a firm, and in exchange, the firm will send rent, not rent, will send a wage back to the household, and the household will have that, that money, and then it'll take that money out of the house and go into a firm, the resource market maybe, and buy a bracelet, and then they'll leave that revenue there, that money there that they earned through their wages, and then they'll take their bracelet home. Okay, so this is a model of how money will flow through and resources flow through um, an economy. Okay, version of the same model. This comes from, from Jason Welker. Um, there's a, it's, the same, it's the same model, actually. Here are households, here are firms, here's the product market, here's the resource market. Right? And it's a, it, but this one's a little bit more complicated and, and sophisticated and advanced, maybe, because it talks about the banking sector, the foreign sector, and the government sector here. But for this purposes, this is just another example of a model. And this is actually the, the circular flow model that I use in my other video um, to talk about how it is that, um, that money, uh, resources, and flow through an economy. Okay, so economists are famous for that, for this. It's based on a bunch of assumptions. You could even make the argument that like a regular supply and demand graph is a model. It's not real. Um, there's many assumptions that are made about, about people and how they behave. And some people say that's a critique of economics. And I think as you get farther and farther into your studies, you'll realize that those assumptions, the, the, the inherent um, ability to argue that some finding you have in economics is false is where the beauty of economics is. It is imperfect. We're talking about human beings. That's why it's a social science. And so that ambiguity, that lack of exactness, um, makes it a really interesting uh, field to study. And building on that, there's this idea of rational economic thinking. Um, and in spite of the difficulty that economists face in devising valid economic models, uh, come up with this idea, this assumption, in order to establish these models um, about how people will behave. Right? And one important assumption that economists make is that humans behave rationally, which is to say predictably. 
That is that consumers will seek to maximize their utility, their, their happiness. Yay, I have an ice cream cone. And producers will seek to maximize their profits, which isn't always the case either. But that's what the assumption is. And so the behavior of consumers and producers is then examined in the context of these assumptions. Right? So even if some individuals may not necessarily behave in a rational manner, the assumptions can usually be made for larger groups of people. And therefore, it makes it possible for economists to have a job. All right. So rational economic thinking is the assumption that economists make that consumers will seek to maximize the utility and producers seek to maximize their profits. I'm repeating myself. This could also be stated as follows. It means that people make the choices that in time and with, at the time and with the information that they have at their disposal will give them the greatest amount of satisfaction. So the rational economic thinking is that I'm going to make a decision when I walk out of my classroom to, if I buy something based on what will bring me utility, right? Pleasure and happiness. So hold that idea in your head, this rational economic thinking and then taking that and building models. It's, a, it's background uh, understanding of the way economists think. And if you think like an economist, then you're going to be more apt to understand the economic theories that are coming your way. And you just may become an economist yourself. And in fact, if you go through the entire IB economics uh, syllabus, you can consider yourself an economist. I promise you. You will be incredibly well informed about all things economic in this planet. So I hope you found this video helpful, and we'll talk to you in a bit.